everybody. Uh, sure. As you may know, I'm, I'm the president of the General Assembly, but the role I've been given on this scene at this moment is to be the interviewer of Peter Baca, who has been working a lot uh, with the Sustainable Development Goals uh, in his, in his uh, capacity uh, uh, as, uh, as a businessman with the World Business Council and uh, my fellow Dane, Mr. Thomas Wiedebeck, <laughs> who is the execu Executive Chief o Operation Officer uh, in Novo Science, uh, which has been one of the, the Danish companies most in forefront with working with the Sustainable Development Goals. And uh, I'll start with you, Peter. Uh, could you enlighten us around here of why so many business people uh, uh, as yourself are engaged in this issue uh, uh, and why it's important that you are actually engaged, all of you, in the business community? Well, uh, thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Uh, I think the, the reality is very simple. Business cannot succeed in a society that fails, somebody once said. And society is failing in many areas, whether it's climate, inequality, poverty, the environmental stress. And the risks of not acting are now becoming quickly uh, bigger than the risk of acting. So I have said this morning in, in another session where I was asked to speak, that I actually believe the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, are the biggest gift that the UN system has ever given to the world because we no longer have to talk about what is sustainability about or what do we want to achieve. Here it is, 17 goals that by 2030 will make the world and the societies and the, and the people of the world operate and live uh, a lot more sustainable than ever before. I think uh, last year, the Paris Agreement on Climate Change, and, and I, I think we must all remember that climate action is just simply goal 13 out of 17 goals. It's not a different thing. It's an integral part of the SDGs. Has given the world and businesses around the world a real reason to mobilize their activities the UN system has opened up to let businesses in together with civil society, together with mayors of cities. And that, I think, is, is the most crucial element. Only in partnership between uh, government, science, business, civil society, will we be able to make the world sustainable. And that's something that now many, many businesses around the world recognize, hence the big uh, number that that are here today. If I could yeah, just yeah, uh, add, a, add, add a quick comment here, uh, I, I would agree that this is probably one of the biggest gifts we have gotten for a long time. If, if we talk yeah. about uh, the, yeah. uh, the need of industry, we like clear rules, we like to know exactly what it is we have to work towards, and here it is, 17 goals, we can start to work on them. We know this is what the world is working towards jointly, and we just have to get our things in gear, working towards them fast. This is fantastic. Well, it's, it's actually interesting. Uh, we, ha we had a, a, a conversation we both joined this morning, uh, this discussion about normally the business community do not ask for rules and regulations. But here, at least the two of you are actually asking the national and international community to establish the sufficient set of rules so that you can do the right things in order to fulfill the sustainable development, right? That's absolutely correct. Uh, the important thing here is that, that the world has decided uh, to move in this direction. Yeah. And that gives us a very, very good indication of which areas is it we need to work on. That means that we can focus our resources uh, for, th for this direction and thereby make our business a better business, a more sustainable business, good for our investors, good for our owners, good for our employees and good for the planet. Yeah, this is actually, uh, for me, a very essential and maybe you could uh, add some comments here, Peter. Uh, isn't 
am I right in saying what I've said many times now, that what we need is the, the set of rules and regulations, including taxation, for instance, on CO2 emissions and coal price, uh, that makes it obvious for any businessman, being big or small, that uh, it's there are identical outcomes of which investment is the best for humanity and which is the best for the private business. Yeah, I, I agree we need rules. We need to look at the economic incentives, including uh, taxation. We also need transparency and accountability. Mm. Yep. So this, this also needs to flow into the reporting and disclosure in the governance of business and countries, by the way, to make sure that we can identify who is actually playing. The only slight nuance that I would put to your text is it cannot become an excuse that business sits back and waits for government to provide the set of rules that will fix everything. Because that's not going to happen and it's not possible. I think what you will see, and hence I call this co-creation between government and business, that we will say here is a new idea, a new technology or a new business model that will address a number of the SDGs. But listen up, Mr. President, some of the current regulations or some of the taxations do not allow us to implement these. Yeah. And then we need to get into a real dialogue saying, okay, there's an innovation, a new idea. Now we can change the technology and then it will scale up fast. So I would actually call upon business to take the lead and in some respect, government will have to become fast followers to be able to adjust the regulation, the taxation, the, the governance rules, to make sure that we scale up as fast as we can go. Yeah, but I think that is more or less already the case. That's already the that, case. That, that you, at least mm. the part of mm. the business community you come from, are asking these uh, questions, uh, bringing forward these demands, and, and that is also necessary, I think, that because many governments haven't got it yet. Yeah. They, they, they have committed themselves, but they haven't got what it takes to make this thing moving. I, I, I think that that is a, a very, very good point. When we see how fast uh, technology is developing, no one could have predicted what we're able to do today, just a couple of years ago. So, so it, it, it wouldn't have made sense to try to regulate. Now we can see what is it we, we need in order to move forward. And then in co-creation, as Peter says, we can ask for this is in the rules, this is the regulations we need in order to move forward. Peter? Can I... Ma there's, there's one concern I have around the SDGs. And like I said, I'm here to celebrate them. I'm not here to criticize them. <laughs> but there are 17 SDGs with 169 mm -hmm. targets. Mm -hmm. I don't think it, the right way to go at this is to say, Novozymes, what are you doing on goal one or no. two? Or th we need interconnected solutions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We also need to recognize that if you're in the food business, then goal two is obviously yours, but goal 11 or, or nine or whatever may be a bit strange to you. And that's why today, one of the reasons why Thomas and I are here is we are launching a new initiative called DIVA, which will be a venture fund to implement SDGs. As we all know, there are thousands of ideas out there to innovate towards the SDGs. Some are on the core business of companies like Novozymes. They will invest themselves and mm -hmm. bring them to scales. Some are a little further removed from their business, but still great ideas. So what Diva will do is they will take those ideas, put some investment money behind, find entrepreneurs for them, and develop a much broader range of SDG solutions than a company on its own could ever do. So I think you'll see many more innovations coming up soon. And for us, that's a fantastic opportunity in the way that that helps us de-risk what we are working on. Because a lot of the, the uh, needs in launching uh, some of these new ideas, we don't have 
the knowledge to do it. We don't have the experience. But if we can have a, a setup like Diva, who gets the experience in this, who know how to manage uh, uh, these projects, who know how to get funding, that's a big de-risk for us as a corporation, and we like to de-risk. Yeah. Talking about risk and de-risking, uh, there has been this discussion also that the insurance companies yeah. could be much more present in pricing the risk of not uh, working sufficiently quickly with uh, capping the climate change. Yeah. Uh, because that's another aspect of this. The long-term investor will know now that if we don't act on climate change, it will be a very risky uh, investment in very many fields. Yeah. No, I, I agree. The the, the financial sector at large and the insurance sector uh, as a subset of that needs to get much more involved in this debate. I am, however, optimistic that that can happen. Uh, two years ago in this same town, as part of the climate summit that uh, the SG organized, the insurance community said that in six years from now, so today in about five years from now, all their asset management decisions will go through an environmental and a social risk assessment. Yep. That's basically covering the whole SDG agenda. Out of Paris, we now see there is a task force for climate-related financial disclosures. Mm -hmm. It will report into the Financial Stability Board, who will bring their recommendations to the G20. The minute that task force concludes a disclosure standard for climate risks, then people like yourself, myself, will say, well, if we're doing this for climate, hey, what about the whole agenda? Mm -hmm. So I think there is a big movement underway now to get the financial community involved. In the Global Commission for Business and Sustainable Development, there is an explicit working group on the financial sector, which includes insurance. So I think we have some pretty good opportunities to get them involved, and without their involvement, you're right, it will not get to the scale that we need. Do you have any comments on that, Thomas? No. Good. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, I remember, that may be my last question that we can uh, give to the audience, but I remember a discussion we took part in, both of us, Peter, in, in, in Davos, uh, where there was uh, a kind of wrapping up, if we do something on climate, which of the other 16 goals are we actually also improving yeah. on, yeah. which is, of course, a very, very important uh, information to have. Uh, and I think we all agree that climate is, is, as you said, it's one of them, but it's the most urgent one, because if we don't act on climate, yeah. we will not get the resources to act on the other ones. No, so I, I agree, and uh, last year, uh, we worked in the World Business Council with, with 170 companies on nine business solutions for climate. These nine solutions cover 11 of the 17 SDGs. Mm -hmm. It's not just gold 13 mm -hmm. that you're addressing, you're addressing many more. That's why I said it's so important to think about interconnectedness of the SDGs. I, I think, if I'm totally honest from a business point of view, there will not be too many business people who wake up in the morning saying, today I'm going to work on goal 14 <laughs> or on goal 2. They will work on a solution mm -hmm. that will cover all kinds of goals and the sustainability reporting of companies, that will make the link between what companies do, where their impacts are, and how it gets reflected in progress we're making on the agenda. Yeah. Well, we turn over to the audience here, if there are any questions. Yeah. Yeah. I have a two part question addressing what you said. So you were talking about it starting from the, the businesses. Close. Take the microphone as close as close. possible to your So mic. you were talking about it starting from the businesses. And I agree with you. I have a startup and we're looking to address these issues. But what about the big ones who are set in their ways who are looking at margins? How do you get them to change? Because it's kind of like we're pointing fingers, they need to start it, they need to start it, how do we actually make a change? And second part, what's the name of your fund? I'd love to look it up. So can you spell it out? Yeah, the name of the fund is DIVA, 
D I V A. I don't know if they have a website already. Do Divi.org? Diviventures.org. Um, <laughs> I I th I think you're right. Uh, there's always a risk of finger pointing, big to small, business to government, the other way around, and that's that's a game that we should no longer play. We have an agenda. We know what we must agree. We also know that if we don't get everybody, small, big, government, science, anyone else involved, we're not going to get there. And the ones who don't play, the ones who do not want to transform, we will have to find out through transparency. Mm. So this task force on, on climate-related disclosures, in my mind, and as a suggestion to the president of the General Assembly, should have a follow-up task force on SDG-related disclosures. And then we will find out which companies do and don't make the transformation. If I could just uh, make a comment to this, uh, I, uh, I think Peter has a, a very, very good point. We focus on our margin. That, that's uh, what we report uh, on a quarterly basis. But we, we certainly don't see that as separate from focusing on a sustainable uh, development. And I think also uh, what, what, what we talked about with Diva, this is a, a, a business model where if, if we don't have the experience, if we don't know how to do it, this is a way to do it so that we don't use our resources in areas where we don't have experience, but there might still be long-term a very good business. That's what we would like to see. So, so I don't see a conflict between focusing on margin and focus on sustainable development. To us, they go more and more hand in hand. More questions from the audience? Yeah, you? No. <laughs> yeah. This lady. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> We've spoken quite a bit about businesses. Um, so I guess my question is, how do we look at consumers now? So how do you get the buy-in? And what is the responsibility of the businesses to educate and communicate to consumers the importance of what they're doing? And how does that look? It, it's a very, very good point. And, and uh, first, I have to say, we're a business-to-business uh, company in Novozymes. Uh, but, but I think we all have a responsibility. And this is what gets back to also, I think, what, what Peter was mentioning before, that this is not business doing something. This is business, government, society, all taking a responsibility for the education. Because I agree completely with you that, that we cannot do this. We cannot get by into use of technology if we don't increase the general level of knowledge uh, on what it is these technologies are doing and, and how we help each of us educate throughout the world. So if I may add to that, I, these two fine gentlemen are Danish. I'm, I'm Dutch, <laughs> which, which means my diplomatic skills are even lower developed <laughs> than. So, so I think uh, your point is a, is a crucial point and one which is a relatively uncomfortable bad fellow for most businesses. Uh, because I always say we're very good at the supply side of sustainability. We, we make our factories energy efficient. We, we do all these things that are in our control. But when it comes to advertising our products, there aren't too many good examples yet of companies saying, don't buy this jacket. That was one campaign uh, because you already have one. Uh, because that's not the model of business. <laughs> what, we, what we need to develop, and that's what we're trying to get off the ground now, is a piece of work called sustainable lifestyles. What, what is actually a sustainable lifestyle? What does it mean for you and me, and not just the people in the West or the North, but all around the world, to be living in a sustainable way? And what does that then mean for the type of products, the way you advertise, it's a pretty new area, and we need to really invest a lot of thought into that. So I, 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 I can't stress enough, it's not only business that's going to do that. We need science, and not, not just planetary scientists, but also behavioral scientists to come up with ideas. And we need the youth, which got such a prominence this morning, to speak up and ask for different products or not want to buy a car, but share a car, or whatever the, the solutions may be. So there's, there's a lot to be done. Maybe here, uh, before ending, I, I, could, uh, I would like to ask a question, maybe first to you, Thomas. Uh, having been a company, always in the forefront when it's about 
environment, sustainability, uh, also working with, with health, of course, uh, and being very profitable in doing this. And congratulations with that. Uh, we, we, uh, isn't there a message also to governments that, well, we have to do all this because it's existential for the future of humanity. They, they, they ought to know that already. Mm -hmm. But uh, even if you look at it at a national employment perspective, you may get more, better uh, jobs and more profit in companies if you are on the forefront as a society in implementing uh, the necessary framework for sustainable development, then you will have in trying to protect those companies and those productions which has to go down anyway. I, th I think it's, it's, it's a very, very strong point, and we certainly believe that the long-term uh, prosperity of Novozymes, the long-term future for our company, that is to be on the forefront uh, of, of sustainability. That, that's what we've been doing uh, all through uh, our uh, life as, as, as a company, and that's what we will continue uh, uh, to do. We believe that we serve our shareholders best, we serve society, we serve our employees by far the best if we are on the forefront of the technology. Any comments, Peter? Yeah, I, I would say I, I agree with you, but we need to do more work to bring the proof in a way that people who are not coming to New York because they haven't heard about it or they don't believe in it yet also hear you. So last year, or I think 2014, the new climate economy report came out. A commission uh, was formed... Uh, President Calderon led it, yep. and that has really changed the conversation around climate change. You cannot grow your economy if you don't act on climate. Now we have formed a commission called the Global Commission for Business and Sustainable Development, another short, sexy title, <laughs> of which Mark Mellock Brown is the chairman, and, and quite a few reputable CEOs are in there. And they are going to make the business case for engaging with the broad SDG agenda. That report will come out at the end of this year. I would argue that's going to be a very important report to convince not just the people who already believe that this is important, but the wide business community and financial community of the importance of this agenda. Thank you. Thank you to both of you.